Hi everybody, my name is Aaron and welcome back to my channel. Laura Prepon claims she has left Scientology. Not only does she say she left Scientology, she says she left Scientology five years ago. There might be something there to take away from the fact that uh, it would take somebody five years to publicly enunciate that they have left Scientology. Somebody who's been associated with Scientology, someone whose reputation uh, maybe has taken a little bit of a hit for having been involved with Scientology in any way. And yet it takes her five years to even mention, hey, by the way, I don't do that anymore. This all came out in an interview that was published today in People Magazine. Here's the exact excerpt from the interview. Laura says, or the author writes, moving on, after years of praising Scientology, Laura Prepon revealed in a new interview on Tuesday, August 17th, that she quietly left the controversial religion. Quote, I'm no longer practicing Scientology, the 41-year-old That 70s Show alum told People Magazine. I've always been very open-minded, even since I was a child. I was raised Catholic and Jewish. I've prayed in churches, meditated in temples. I've studied Chinese meridian theory. I haven't practiced Scientology in close to five years, and it's no longer part of my life. Yikes. She doesn't soft pedal at all with this statement. I mean, I don't know how many different ways somebody could say they're not involved in Scientology, but uh, that ending there, it is no longer part of my life, leaves nothing to be doubted, nothing to the imagination. This is kind of a big deal. I guess um, if I were a Scientologist and I was reading this, this would be a big deal to me. Uh, as, a, as someone who's in Scientology, I think um, there's an understanding that people leave for a variety of reasons. You could even go so far as to say that it's possible for a Scientologist to see somebody drift away from Scientology and not think the worst of them. People understand this is something that happens. But speaking publicly to the press about having left Scientology would be considered a high crime in the world of Scientology. The charge would be publicly departing Scientology and it is a high crime considered a suppressive act. And it's sort of, a, it's sort of crossing a line that someone has to intentionally choose to cross. If Laura wanted to, she could have somehow soft peddled this statement. She could have made some sort of weird wishy-washy thing about how Scientology is something she's done in her past and she does many things and she has many friends who are Scientologists. She sort of could have uh, skipped it, kind of skipped the question. Um, but saying definitively, I haven't practiced Scientology in close to five years and it is no longer part of my life is a signal. It is a signal to other Scientologists. It is a signal saying this is a hard stop. I am not a Scientologist. And when I said if I was in Scientology, this would be a big deal. That would be apparent to me. She didn't have to be so clear and direct and concise like that. And I would know if I was, you know, you know, put yourself in the shoes of a Scientologist. I would know that Laura would know that wording it in that specific way was an intentional choice and a clear message. Have you ever noticed that when a celebrity has to publicly comment on uh, having been involved in Scientology or being involved in Scientology, they always couch it in these terms where they're describing themselves as a student of all the world religions. Will and Jada Smith did this in every interview they did on the subject. The moment they address the subject of being involved in Scientology, they have to sort of soft pedal it. They have to sort of justify it as if it's not a very serious thing. They're not very deeply involved. It's just one of many. They sample, they're, they're a connoisseur of religions, a dilettante of them all. I just think it's noteworthy that you never see any one of these guys publicly come out. I mean, maybe after 30 years, John Travolta doesn't really soft pedal it anymore, but anyone who's kind of newly being attached or associated with Scientology. They don't just come out and be like, oh yeah, Scientology, I love it, I'm really dedicated. They're always downplaying and justifying their involvement. Even uh, Jada Smith, I mean, Jada more than Will. Jada always took it more seriously than Will did and was in deeper. But even, you know, Jada did one of her Red Table Round Talk or whatever the hell it is. Red Round Table, I think, is the name of the show that Jada has. And she brought Leah on to kind of bury the hatchet on any beef they had with each other on the subject of Scientology. And even in that episode, Jada just lied her ass off on her involvement in Scientology. Even after leaving Scientology, and even while having a quote unquote frank and honest discussion with Leah about it, she just had to lie her ass off about how serious she'd ever been in Scientology. 
She has to downplay it. I just mentioned this as like, this is how toxic Scientology's PR is in the world, even in the entertainment industry, that even after someone leaves, they still feel the need to downplay it and justify what their involvement had been because otherwise they just seem like absolute lunatics or forever having had anything to do with it. Let's take a look at some of the words that Laura used here in her uh, interview. I'm no longer practicing Scientology. I haven't practiced Scientology in close to five years and it's no longer part of my life. Do you ever notice how Scientologists can't really keep their story straight about whether Scientology is something you do or something you believe? They can't keep their story straight about whether it's just a common sense, feel good techniques that you can apply in your life to achieve certain results or whether it's actually a faith, a belief system, a religion. Like is Scientology an applied religious philosophy or is Scientology a faith? This behavior is a reflection of the really schizophrenic nature of the Church of Scientology. By the way, I get a lot of shit in the comments for saying Church of Scientology. I actually recorded an entire video describing why I say Church of Scientology instead of like cult of Scientology. So just for the record, I only say Church of Scientology because it's the legal name of the organization and not because I'm vouching for its status as an actual church or religion, just an aside. So Scientologists in private, in their heart of hearts, when they're talking amongst themselves and not to the public or to the media, they do not consider Scientology to be a faith, a belief system. They do consider and they would describe Scientology as an applied religious philosophy. I mean, you pick that apart to try to figure out what it means. It means it's something you do. It's not supposed to be, to a Scientologist, something you believe. Scientologists actually think of Scientology as being like the anti-religion, the opposite of having to have faith. They believe Scientology is 100% evidence-based and that you don't have to believe anything that you haven't seen uh, demonstrably to, uh, for yourself to be true or to be workable. They really consider it to be in a completely different bucket than any other religion, any other system of belief, anything you would call a faith. In fact, Scientologists even look down on such words, such as belief or faith or even religion. So Scientologists don't privately consider Scientology is a faith. Uh, there's nothing particularly religious uh, amongst Scientologists. Uh, the, so the exception to this is if any representative of Scientology is talking to the press or if any lawyer for Scientology is um, you know, speaking on Scientology's behalf in the courts, all of a sudden it's my faith, my religion. All of a sudden Scientology policy is referred to as scripture. I can tell you that in my 30 plus years in Scientology, the words faith and scripture were never uttered, never, never came out of the mouth of any public Scientologist or staff member ever. Scientologists don't speak in those words. <laughs> they don't use the words faith. They don't use the word religion. They don't use the word scripture. These things are, would be looked at, anyone saying that would be laughed at in a Scientology organization. Two other words that you'll never hear uttered in a Scientology organization is the words reverend and minister. Never, not in 30 years. Has anyone internally in Scientology referred to themselves as reverend or minister, except maybe with a wink and a laugh? Whenever you see a church representative talking to the media, they will almost always be referring to themselves as, or identify themselves as reverend such and such or minister so and so. Pat Harney does this here locally in Clearwater. She's one of the public relations representatives in the Office of Special Affairs for the Flag Land Base. And it, when she identifies herself in the press, it's reverend, it's minister. In fact, Pat Harney even is one of the, um, I guess you'd say reverends or ministers who, who the church, who, who the city of Clearwater has selected to kind of on a rotating basis, show up to city council meetings and start the city council meeting with a prayer. Uh, that's a common thing to do. And yet Pat Harney, who works in OSA at flag represents herself as a minister and leads city council meetings sometimes with a prayer. Now, of course, she's just reading an article L. Ron Hubbard wrote called like Prayer for Total Freedom or something. But here you have a representative of an organization that does not believe in God, does not believe in a supreme being, does not believe in any of the prophets, not Jesus, not Muhammad, not Joe Smith. You have someone who's an a religious person trying to pull one over on people by pretending the opposite. So anytime you hear the words faith, 
religion, scripture coming out of the word coming out of the mouth of a Scientologist. It's just somebody putting on a show for the press or for the judge or for the courts. So I don't know, I might be getting on a tangent now, but it's just interesting that you've got kind of a contingent of celebrities who see it kind of as their role to present Scientology as a legitimate religion on par with the world's major religions. And they couch their language um, with words like scripture and faith and belief. And then on the other hand, you have a contingent of celebrities out there, either current members or former members, who are uh, trying to soft pedal and justify their involvement in Scientology to such a degree that they refer to it more of like an academic exercise or like philosophical homework, or it's something that you do, it's exercises that you do. It gives you tools to solve problems and communicate better. It's like having a personal coach. It's like going to a Tony Robbins seminar. And so that's just the schizophrenic nature of Scientology. It can never figure out what it wants to be to whom. Scientology is really one thing, but the thing that it is happens to be a very inconvenient thing to be when it comes to getting tax exemption and religious recognition. So it has to pretend to be something different than what it is. The fact that this organization is so incapable of honestly presenting itself to the world is actually one of the things that leaves it so open and vulnerable to uh, criticism and attack. The fraudulent nature of the organization is what makes it so vulnerable. If they were just honest about who they are and what they do, they would have much less problems, but they would also lose their tax exempt status. So I'm not holding my breath for them to become some honest organization. So in this interview that Laura did, I believe she actually says that her husband, Ben Foster, was in fact never a member of Scientology. Now, to the best of my knowledge, that is 100% false. My sources are former Scientologists who were at the Celebrity Center, were public at the Celebrity Center, were Sea Org members at the Celebrity Center, and also grew up in Los Angeles and said that Ben Foster was 100% a Scientologist and that Ben's involvement in Scientology is how he met Laura to begin with. And also, please fact check me on this. I am almost positive that Scientology had been reported as one of the problems or one of the things that led to the breakup between Ben Foster and Robin Wright Penn because Ben was a Scientologist and wanted to keep being one and wanted Robin to become one and she was not interested at all. Now you could chalk that up to tabloid rumors, but I'll tell you what, if I was Ben Foster and publications were saying that I was a Scientologist and a rift regarding Scientology was what came, was what uh, destroyed my relationship I think I would publicly come out and at least comment on, uh, what are you talking about? I'm not a Scientologist. I've never been a Scientologist. So here you again, you have another example of somebody not just trying to soft pedal their involvement, but try to completely erase it and deny it altogether. Ben Foster was absolutely a Scientologist to the best of my knowledge. And yet here you have his wife. While in the process of saying she's been out for five years, still denying her husband had any involvement whatsoever. Again, that's just because Scientology is so goddamn toxic. Nobody wants to have anything to do publicly with it except Tom Cruise. Someone else who always denies being a Scientologist or having ever been a Scientologist is Skrillex. Skrillex is huge in the uh, electronic music scene. His real name is Sonny John Moore. Uh, constantly, whenever it comes up, denies ever having been a member. Yet he was actually born and raised in Scientology. My friends who grew up in the Scientology scene in LA are like, yeah, of course he was a Scientologist. I never grew up in Scientology in LA. When I was a kid, I was in Scientology in Philadelphia. I spent a lot of time in Scientology here in Clearwater, Florida. By the time I got to Los Angeles as a, a Scientologist Sea Org member, I was already an adult and I was in the Sea Org. So I was never in the young Scientology kid scene in Los Angeles. So uh, when it comes to that stuff, I rely on the words of my friends. And um, they've all told me Skrillex is a Scientologist, or at least was. So Laura's just the latest person to leave. I mean, Danny Masterson and his family, the Masterson family, is who got Laura Peepon into Scientology when they were on that 70s show. In fact, I'm almost positive that Laura was actually dating Danny's brother. And Danny Masterson, as we all know, is currently facing charges for, uh, well, I can't say the word or YouTube will like totally ding this video, but the R word, the R ape word. So Danny is in a bunch of deep shit right now. It's really sort of a, a game of chicken to see whether Danny will throw Scientology under the bus first or whether Scientology will throw Danny under the bus first. Should probably do a whole other separate video on that subject. So you have Laura who was really tight with the Masterson clan. She's out. Ben Foster was tight with the Masterson clan. 
he's out. Jason Lee has left Scientology. Beck has left Scientology. Who's next? Ethan Suplee, what are you waiting for? Juliette Lewis, what are you waiting for? Giovanni Rabisi, what are you waiting for? Marissa Rabisi, let's go now. You guys are wasting your time, wasting your money. The ship is sinking. It's only a matter of time. Get out now. Don't be the last ones off the boat. Michael Pena, what are you waiting for? What the hell are you still doing in Scientology? Michael Pena is probably one of the um, most legitimate recent stars. Michael Pena was not born and raised in Scientology. I don't know how he got in. But boy, that guy is a legitimate star these days. And um, oh man, he's just, the fact that he even has anything to do with Scientology is, is an embarrassment. Come on, Michael Pena, come to your senses, get the hell out of there. All right, well, that really is all I have to say on this for now. Thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. I wanna give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Dream Realty. Oh wait, that's me. I've been a real estate investor for over 20 years. I bought my first investment property when I was 20 years old. For the last 15 years, I've been buying and selling my own properties all over Clearwater and Tampa Bay. If you're looking to buy a home or sell a home and you'd like to work with me, get in touch and I'll get it done for you. Help me show the rest of the world that you can be at the top of Scientology's enemies list and still build a successful business enterprise right in Clearwater. Thanks again to everyone who supports this channel and thank you for watching.